Hello, in this video I want to teach you how to work in your kitchen with your backsplash project. Now, there are a few things that you want to consider and I want to go over them as soon as, I mean, as quick as possible. So, so it doesn't make, I mean, this video is not that long. A uh, few things that are important is that you want to consider that the surface in the back is nice and straight or you are prepared to work with a, a, an area that is not even. If you just remove some tile, make sure that the surface in the back is not that compromised. When I say that, that compromised is you don't want to see a lot of the pla plaster and all the stuff. In this case, we had some wallpaper, so that, that was nothing to damage the structure that much. Um, but if you, you, you removed all you know, stuff, I recommend you to use some concrete boards on the back as a, as a backer board, and then do the proper you know, installation of, of sealer of the backer board. In this case, we have your sheet rack, our plaster board, and what we're going to do is we're going to use these uh, three by six tiles, porcelain tiles that are, that are commonly uh, know, uh, known as subway tiles because probably um, back in the days so or still right now they use it a lot in the subway train stations. So I guess subway train. Um, so what happens is that we're going to you know interlock these things, um, stagger them, and we're going to we're going to make sure that. All our cuts, all our cuts are uh, as close as to the edges as possible. And that's something very important. A lot of people will say, no, don't worry, the grout will cover that stuff. Normally it doesn't happen, especially like in my case that I'm going to use some light gray grout. And so you will see these big gaps if you leave big gaps. And the other thing is that when you're working around your switches and outlets, you want to make sure that you unplug them and you, you have a space for them to actually go back over this tile and be fastened properly to the box. So those are very important things. The other thing that is important is that, well, there's a lot of controversy in what I'm gonna say, but a lot of people will consider that it's proper if you divide the, the space to actually start from the center to the sides and, and all these things in order for the wall itself to look nice and symmetrical and beautiful and all that stuff. I have a different approach when possible. Since that is the, the corner that is going to be more visible through through the entire kitchen, I want to make sure that that corner layer looks really nice. So I'm going to put my halves and my full pieces on that corner and I'm going to work my way out. Now, uh, how you, you can achieve that stuff? If you just take your, some of your tiles and you start calculating them, you want to maybe cut one in half or so to start doing your calculations. You want to just kind of lay them over and and go, you know, go the whole, the full length. Sometimes I try to make some calculations, but you know, they end up a little bit off, maybe half inch off, a quarter of an inch off. So you want to make sure that when you're putting it, you you, you know how much is going to be left in one corner or so, and you determine based on that if you want to go ahead and put, you know, full pieces which look really nice in halves, you know, so it looks really really finished. Or if you want to start from the middle, work your way to the sides and all the stuff, and that's that's up to your consideration. Just, just an idea. Now, what we're going to do for that is that we're going to use some few tools. Um, obviously, we're going to use the, the tile. You're going to make your calculation of the tile properly. You know, you're going to measure the square footage or whatever, and then you determine that. Um, the other thing that is very really important is to have a square. You want to use squares, you know, for some of your angles. Uh, a measurement tape, a bigger square for your, your, your you know, your, your different areas. You want to use a, a, a tool to actually spread all the, the glue. In this case, I'm using a synthetic glue that is said to be uh, good for floors and walls. Normally I just use it for the walls. A little more comfortable using some thin set cement on floors. But you can use it anyway, I mean, they, they guarantee it. Uh, so a spatula, screwdrivers, to, to be able to take all your stuff out. Um, eventually, which I don't have here, is wet, but you, have, you want maybe a sponge, and obviously a little tile cutter, even a dry cutter or wet saw. Uh, you can buy those things, you can rent them or, you know, I'll show you some video clips of how you can cut it. Very simple to cut in a wet saw, kind of safe as well. And that's how we're going we're gonna to start with the project. We're going to start with corners, break some of them in half, and start working our way into, into the, the other areas, okay? Okay, so this is a wet saw. This is the way we're going to cut the tiles. Please protect your, your eyes with with um, some goggles, some you know, some glasses or whatever. This 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 uh, little pieces of uh, ceramic are sometimes really sharp. Um, the blade, and um, if you notice, this blade has um, I mean, it has some little uh, particles of dust or uh, diamond dust. 
Um, it has water to maintain the the blade cool, uh, cold. I'm sorry. And um, and what's gonna happen? Don't get too afraid of this this type of pattern. I mean, it's not it's not gonna. Uh, you can get actually really close. I'm gonna give you a little demonstration. Don't do this at home, but I just want to give you the idea so you the perception of the of the blade is different in your mind. Let me show you something. I'm putting my finger on it and it's not cutting my finger due to the fact that it cuts by pressure on this material. So in soft material like my finger, like you see right now, it's, it's not doing much. So, so don't get too too frustrated. Don't do it at home, but I just give you I'm giving you a So if you notice, you were careful enough, you can do actually very tight little little uh, cuts with this type of blades. The machine is not that expensive, actually. You can keep it for your project, you can rent it or whatever, but you, and, and, and it helps a lot. In case of little chips that you want to do, there are some little pliers that you can use. They are not as perfect as obviously cutting with a diamond saw. And that's how we continue our project. Okay, so um, I want to take you over this because... Uh, uh, being you know working is uh, installing this thing is pretty simple um you just need to follow some some guidelines now if you notice the cut around the outlet in this case um I, I put a lot of attention into that in the reason is that if you if you cut this excessively on the top or the bottom your your outlet or your switch is going to be under here and it's going to be really tough to give it a good finish so you want these little two ears that are here these ones to sit on top of the of the tile. Um, that is really important. So when you cut around the outlets, you want to make sure that um, those cuts are are as precise as possible, so you can sit those two little ears over the tile. Okay. Well, after you install the the uh, tiles and your backsplash or whatever you are. In this case, we're working the backsplash. Um, the, the, the grout application is the next step. Now, um, because we have really thin spaces, pretty much the tile itself has self-spacing uh, grooves. So it gives you about 16 of an inch of space. You want to use unsanded grout. And with that, I mean that there are normally two kinds of grouts. One that is really uh, grainy because it has sand designed for bigger, bigger spaces, bigger gaps, the floors and things like that whatever you probably go over an eighth of an inch of, of gap, a gap in between. And there is the unscented one that is really powdery. Um, now, uh, in regular cases, you can actually add just water and mix it up with water. But in this case, I have a, a grout boost uh, solution. This is a synthetic solution that will help you to prevent the growth of a lot of bacteria and, and other you know, agents that you know, normally grow around the area that get wet especially in showers or the backsplash or whatever. So we're going to use this as our media to mix the, the compound in a small bucket. Yeah, in this case, we're going to use just a spatula to, to, to mix it up because we're going to need a small, small amount. And when you have bigger, bigger areas to cover, I suggest to use a drill with a little, you know, mixing um, spade or whatever, bit. And, but that's how we start. After, after you mix it up, obviously you let it resume, follow the structures for a little bit, and then you start applying. Now, you're gonna need uh, a grout applicator, sponges, and a bucket where you have water and you can you know, clean it out afterwards. Okay. I'm applying, ready, uh, applying the, the grout, and, and if you notice, the, the consistency is, 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 is fairly thick really stable and that's because I'm applying this on the wall. So now what I'm doing is that I'm, I want to I wanna make sure this is a grout applicator or squeegee or whatever is made out of you know some sort of like thick foam or sometimes rubber or whatever. You just find one that, that you know adjusts to your hand or whatever. So um, what you want to do is that if you, if you notice it's kind of stable there, it's not moving too much. You want to apply the grout from different directions and, and what I, I meant with that is that um, sometimes when you just apply it in one direction, the grout doesn't get all the way in the, in the grooves or the little gaps in between. So you want to make sure that 
on your cover and you just kind of move it around and you apply and apply it with a with an angle maybe like a 45 degree angle so you have you know more um pressure in between the the the, the joints with the with the graph so you do and then you just kind of wipe the section as much as you can some people suggested actually to use some sandals or whatever like some of those um beauty salon sandals which is kind of the same material uh, but it's hard to maneuver with that and um, you know something very simple it doesn't need to be expensive you just kind of wipe it out let it dry and then you want to make sure that whenever you're removing the grout you're taking it out evenly so your, your lines will maintain the same thickness okay Okay, so we are in um, the final uh, phase of the, of the project and that is uh, making sure that all the lines are nice and straight, you maintain the same, you know, um, well, they are equidistant, so they, they, you know, they stay the same thickness, sometimes you can actually clean that, maintain some leftover grout with you, so you can actually do the corrections, obviously use some sponges to clean it up really well, a recipient with water. Uh, now I don't recommend you to, to wash your sponges inside the sink because the, the, the dust or the sediment, um, I mean the wood sediment inside the, the trap. So if you're going to have, if, if you have to do that, open the water as much as you can, the faucet, let it run constantly. If you do that, I don't recommend you to do that anyway. Uh, after that, and don't get frustrated uh, cleaning and cleaning and trying to make sure that the dust is not on the surface. Use some paper towels, dry, so you can actually wipe this thing out, it will just fall off and then properly and carefully install your, your outlets and your switches back again with, with your respective plates the way you had before. The surface will be um, ready in about 12 hours uh, for regular usage and just make sure that everything now that is, that is wet you can actually correct it, clean, clean all the excess of crowd or whatever and that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.